How does failure affect you? Does failure evoke these common emotions in you? You feel a sense and loss of control. Despair. You're anxious of what people may think of you when it all goes horribly wrong. You feel numb to the situation. You're ashamed of your performance. Again, what will people think of you? You're blameful of external factors. It was too hot, it was too cold. There were people in the way. A whole host of reasons for you not to perform. You're jealous of those who are performing well. You're disappointed, most importantly, in yourself. You're demotivated and feeling ultimately defeated. These negative emotions can paralyze you, preventing you from progressing. Failure when your best just isn't good enough. You can learn a lot from your mistakes, however, when you aren't too busy denying them. The effect that failure has on your psyche is that it will make a goal seem less attainable. A goal that was once within your grasp is now suddenly much, much further away. The failure will distort your perceptions of your abilities. It will doubt, make you doubt your self-confidence. Am I good enough? Failure makes you believe that you are helpless. Oh, there's nothing I can do about this. A single failure can create a subconscious fear of failure. You don't even realise, but you won't put yourself forward for things just in case. Fear of failure often leads to a subconscious self-sabotaging. You stop training a couple of weeks before the big event. You add a few extra sessions in because you're worried that you haven't done enough. All of these will sabotage your performance on the big day. Unfortunately, failure of performance can be transmitted from your parents to the children. The pressure to succeed increases performance anxiety and ultimately causes choking. Fear and shame can be crippling. When arousal is low, you will often find the performance is low. The athlete is not psyched sufficiently to perform and there is no motivation. Performance is at an optimum when there is enough at stake to just fear failure and anticipate those shameful emotions. Unfortunately, that fear of failure can be crippling when the stakes are too high and arousal spills over into anxiety, resulting in rash decision making or an inability to fuel the performance due to nausea. Many people struggle to eat the day or morning before a big performance when it is important to make sure that you've got the right nutrients in your body to perform at the highest level. If you look at the inverted U hypothesis to the right of the screen, the U signifies that if the arousal is low, the performance will be low. When the arousal is at its optimum, your performance will be high. But if your arousal is excessively high, then also this will result in low performance. You are in control, however. You must be committed to controlling your emotions and taking the actions necessary for future success. Fear of failure is not always a bad thing. It can make you reassess your situation, adjust your goals and your methods of attaining them. When you fail, you need to harness the emotion Review the process and devise a strategy that works for you. Failure doesn't define you. It's how you bounce back that defines you. Failure is full of valuable information. Failure is feedback and feedback is the breakfast of champions. The naturally gifted athlete will not succeed if they cannot rationalise failure and use the feedback positively. Mental focus and intrinsic motivation is often the most important factor defining an athlete. It's otherwise known as grit. That grit and determination can take an average athlete to be an elite performer. Intrinsic motivation comes from within. It's derived from the enjoyment of the sport and the feeling that the activity evokes. The athlete performs simply for the reward inherent in their participation. You need to review your motivation. Why are you training? Why are you competing? 
The extrinsic rewards or motivators are that you feel that there is no choice. There's parental or school pressure. You've been pushed into it. There's outside factors. Perhaps you're participating for prize money or rewards for the top places. Or maybe you're participating due to peer pressure. If you focus on the intrinsic motivators, such as the enjoyment, the release of endorphins that give you that feel good factor, that social interaction and the sense of pride from doing well, regardless of whether it be winning or losing, need to think what part the social online social sports apps have in affecting your psyche think about the amount of times that you have perhaps popped an excuse onto the title of your strava oh it was an endurance run oh it was taking it easy today run with the girls ran with the dog taking in the scenery etc etc we can come up with a host of run titles that will imply that you were just taking it easy. Some people have deleted sessions before it's viewed by others because it wasn't up to their exacting standards. And again, they're worried about what others will think of them. Some people may stop their watches for recovery intervals or perhaps when crossing the road because it will impact on their overall time. Are they doing that for themselves or are they doing that to hide the times from their peers those they want to hold them in high respect do you compare yourself to others and end up running or biking faster than perhaps you were supposed to because you've become too competitive and again it's there for the whole world to view perhaps those of you who are on Zwift have adjusted your weight to improve your power to weight ratio on Zwift, giving you faster times and more impressive race results. Although online social apps give you the opportunity to race with your friends, they can also become a demotivator and persist with that fear of failure. If you stay in control, you will succeed. We're all victims of our psyche, but those who are in control will ultimately be those who succeed. Set yourself realistic goals. Stop comparing yourself to others. Do it because you love it. Remember, success is ultimately in the eye of the beholder. It's not always about winning the world championships or getting a gold medal. How far have you traveled? What times were you putting in last year and what are you achieving this year? Have you moved forwards? All, always a step forward is a step in the right direction and can be classed as success. My favourite motto is, it's not about the time you have on the day, but the time you've had along the way. <laughs>